اهلا بكم Back again to the episodes of uh, radiology capsules which I present in English only. It may be the shortest capsule but it is the most informative one. Of course you know the diagnosis of cerebral hemorrhage or brain hemorrhage is very easy and straightforward by CT scan. As we appreciate the hemorrhage as a hyperdense area, in comparison to the gray appearance of the adjacent brain tissue, as you see in these examples. Cerebral hemorrhage in the left basal ganglia extending to the left ventricle, and another example of uh, right-sided subdural hematoma, and another example of left epidural hematoma. And as you see, all of these hemorrhage appearing market hyperdense in comparison to the adjacent uh, gray appearance of the brain tissue. But the pitfall and all the dilemma in the diagnosis of different stages of brain hemorrhage by MRI. So my talk today will be how can you diagnose the brain hemorrhage or the cerebral hemorrhage by a very simple way in its different stages by MRI and more specifically by T1 weighted and T2 weighted images. Let us take an idea first about stages of brain hemorrhage by MRI. We have five stages, hyperacute hemorrhage, acute hemorrhage, early subacute hemorrhage, late subacute hemorrhage, and chronic cerebral hemorrhage. The hyperacute hemorrhage, which is lasting less than one day from the start of bleeding. Acute hemorrhage from one to two days, early subacute hemorrhage from two to seven days, late subacute hemorrhage from seven to 14 days, and after 14 days, this is the stage of the chronic cerebral hemorrhage. Now look at this diagram. This lamp represents the T1 weighted image, and this lamp represents the T2 weighted image. Now draw three cycles. One black in the beginning, one gray in the middle, and one white at the end of each lamp. Now we will draw five circles. Each one represents one stage of brain hemorrhage. The first one will be here, represents the hyperacute hemorrhage. I mean hemorrhage which lasts for less than one day from the start of the bleeding. The second circle will be here, represents the acute hemorrhage or the hemorrhage from one day to two days. The third circle will be here, represents the early subacute hemorrhage or hemorrhage from two to seven days. The fourth one, will be here represents the late subacute hemorrhage or hemorrhage from seven days to 14 days. The fifth circle will be here represents the chronic stage of hemorrhage or the hemorrhage more than 14 days. If we connect these five circles together, we will have the shape of figure of nine, as you see. Very easy now to understand and memorize the different MRI intensities of hemorrhage in different chronological ages. The hyperacute stage of hemorrhage will be gray on both T1 and T2, as you see. The intensity of acute hemorrhage will be gray on T1 and the hypo-intense or dark on T2 weighted image, as you see. The intensity of early subacute hemorrhage will be white or hyper intense on T1 and the dark or hypo intense on T2 weighted image. The intensity of late subacute hemorrhage, I mean from 7 to 14 days, will be hyper intense on both T1 and T2, as you see. And the intensity of chronic hemorrhage, I mean after 14 days, will be hypo intensity on both T1 and T2 weighted image, as you see here. Now, let us take some illustrative cases. The first one, we have T2 weighted image and the T1 weighted image. The area of hemorrhage here, seen as gray area in the left frontal and 
the similar area in the T1 also appearing gray. If we use our diagram, let us see gray on T2 and the gray on T1. So gray in T2 and the gray on T1, meaning we are in hyperacute stage of cerebral hemorrhage. So it is gray on T1, gray on T2, and the duration or the age is less than one day. Of course, by CT scan, it's very easy to be diagnosed as you see here. Another example, we have T2 and you have T1, and the region of the cerebral hemorrhage here seen gray also in T2, and the gray on T1, let us use our diagram. Here, gray, on T2 and the gray on T1 equal to hyperacute stage of the cerebral hemorrhage. The third example, on T2 we have area of hypointensity and on the T1 it is of gray appearance. Let us use our diagram here. So hypointense in T2 and gray intensity on T1 meaning that we are in a stage of acute cerebral hemorrhage. So acute cerebral hemorrhage, gray on T1, black on T2, and the age of the hemorrhage from one to two days. Another example, T2 and the T1, we have large right-sided subdural hematoma, hypo-intense on T2, and the gray appearance on T1. So according to our diagram, hypo-intense in T2, and the gray appearance on T1, so we are in a stage of acute hematoma, which gray on T1, as you see, and the black on T2, as you see, and the age of the hematoma is from one to two days. Another example, we have T2 and we have T1. In T2 weighted image, we have large hemorrhage of hypo-intense area in the T2 and the hyper-intense on T1. So according to our diagram, hypo-intense on T2 and the hyper-intense on T2, so we are in the stage of early subacute hematoma. So early subacute hematoma, it will be white in T1, black on T2 or hypo-intense, and the age of the hematoma from two to seven days. Another example, we have posterior left occipital epidural hematoma, hyperintense on T2 and the hyperintense also in T1. So, according to our diagram, hyperintense on T2 and the hyperintense on T1, it's equal to we are in the stage of late subacute hematoma, white in T1, white in T2, and the age of the hematoma from 7 to 14 days. The last example, we have area of cerebral hemorrhage, hypo-intense in T2, hypo-intense in T1, as you see. So according to our diagram, hypo-intense in T2 and the hypo-intense in T1. So we are in the stage of chronic hemorrhage, which is hypo-intense in both T1 and T2 weighted image. And the age of the hematoma is more than 14 days. So this is everything related to the cerebral hemorrhage at the different stages by MRI examination. See you, inshallah, in next episode.